Hi, this is Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy. In this video, I'm going to be looking at shooting in dull conditions. Join me. Well, I'm at the beautiful old church at Brampton in Cumbria, just around the corner from where I live. It's a gorgeous little building. Um, first of all, I'll apologise for the sound. This is the first time I've shot on the internal microphones on the Lumix GX8. Unfortunately, I've got out here, like a lot of things, you don't always have the best of look, and my microphone has decided it doesn't want to play. And to get this, this video done, I'll have to use the internal one. So let's see how it works. It's, it's a good little test on the, actually on the GX8 since I haven't used the internal mics before. We'll see how it goes. As you can see behind, we've got a beautiful little old church. And we're out today shooting to see what happens with the effect of uh, using natural light on a dull day. Now we all love the idea of the bright sunshine, it gives high contrast, it gives some wonderful reflections and refractions in, how, in the pictures that we see and how we can actually get colours to shine through. But that's usually not natural. And one of the things in the UK especially, I live in the, the north of England, right on the England-Scotland border, we don't tend to get a huge amount of bright days. The majority of our days, if they're not wet, and it has been raining recently, if they're not wet then they're usually overcast and dull. Not all the time, but sometimes. So I've got to get used to the shooting, but it has some big, big advantages. Now one of the big advantages for me is the fact that it, it allows an awful lot of latitude. I shoot usually on RAW plus JPEG, so I've always got some instant photos there with the JPEGs, but I shoot RAW the majority of the time, and all the detail you want is there. And the beauty with that is you can bro bring an awful lot of that detail and the colour and the contrast and all the bits and pieces that you really want, you can bring that out the photograph. But the real benefit on shooting on a, a, a duller day for me is the fact that it's a lot easier to shoot. It's almost impossible to burn the highlights out because the dynamic range between the really bright parts and the really dark parts tends to be less. So you've got the ability to actually shoot easier. You're not battling against burning highlights out and making sure their exposure has to be spot on. You've got a, a, quite a bit of latitude there. Now the other thing for me as well, we talk about soft and hard light. Now this is beautiful for me because a dull day like this, we get soft light. And by soft light I mean the, the, the sort of light which makes the shadows less prominent. You don't get the hard edges on the shadows or the really dark blacks of shadows. A hard light will give you those, those sharp, hard edges and a real contrast difference. So a soft light, which an awful lot of people strive for, is very easy in a dull day like this. We achieve soft light by having a large light source. And we also have it by having a large diffused light source. Now, we've got the biggest light source you can imagine. We've got the sky up there. But also we have a huge, fantastic diffuser. All, this, all these clouds, all this dull overcast over overcover is a huge diffuser for us. And what that does is it stops the light coming in single directions and bouncing hard off an object or stopping the light from passing by it properly and causing a dull patch. It allows the light to wrap around the object and allows the light to bounce off all over the place in lots and lots of different directions. Now as you can see, we're sweeping around the, the, this, uh, this graveyard here, there's almost no shadows whatsoever. Now this is uh, about 6.30 in the evening there's almost no shadows and also if I'm shooting the building behind, you can see the church, quite often when I'm shooting churches I'll be battling against hard shadow of the building itself stopping the sunlight getting through. This to me is wonderful. It does give limitations insofar as what you can do for some dramatic shots but a lot that can be done in post-production and you'll find that it's easier to do it in post-production when you don't have to battle against the shadows than without. I've had some fantastic shots of buildings where the majority of it's great but, but the foreground's just obliterated with a big black shadow. One of the things I would suggest though is when you shoot on days like this, don't rely on the auto white balance if you can help it. Get on your white balance adjuster, stick it to the cloud position and shoot on there. Now if you can set the white balance, if you know how to set the white balance properly, and I can do a bit, I'll do a video on setting white balance at a different time. But if you're using a grayscale or a white scale to actually set your white balance, do it properly then because that is going to be more accurate. But the beauty about setting to a preset white balance as opposed to the auto is it won't change. The first shot you take will be one colour temperature, 
the last shot that you take will still be at the same colour temperature. So it allows in post-production an easier time. With an, with an auto white balance, your white colour temperature, white balance colour temperature can actually change between each shot. So it's worth sticking it on the cloud position if you don't know, um, as opposed to the sunshine or the auto, but put it onto a fixed white balance and that's going to make things an awful lot easier for you. Now I love shooting on days like today. One of the things it can really do is can give some dramatic skylines. If you can get some definition on the clouds, and that's sometimes difficult, but if you can get some definition on the clouds, you can really start getting some interesting and moody shots. And even on something like this, if we look at the, look at the clouds behind me, we've got a bit of blue sky coming in. But generally, even if you haven't got much definition on the clouds there, in post-production you can really start to bring some of it out, which is invisible normally. So we'll have a look at post-production later on in this video, and we'll see what we can do with some of these shots. Now keep watching this video until a little bit further through, because I'm going to be actually taking some of the shots now, but I'm going to be showing you what I've done in post-production to improve them. And I'll show you beginning and after, before and after shots. And it's quite a fascinating what you can do. Now keep watching this video because towards the end I'm going to be showing you some of the before and after shots when I start doing so, some of the post-production on them. Now I'm shooting the day on my OMD EM1 Mark 1 and I think it's a great little camera. Yes it has limitations, its uh, video is very very poor, it's uh, 16 megapixel as opposed to the newer 20 megapixel but over the years it has really done me superbly well. I find it's good in the hand, it's, it shoots really well, it's small, it's light, it's easy. And it also proves that you just don't need to have the, the newest, fa most fantastic camera on the market to be able to get some fantastic results. Downside, video. It's lousy on video, it really is. It's difficult to get good shots and this is why I tend to use the Lumix, uh, the, either the GX8 or the G9 for the video shots. So I'm um, filming this on a combination of the two, the GX8 and the G9. But let's go and get some photos and let's see what we can get on this. I'll be back to you soon. Now one of the things I would say is on a day like this, don't forget to bring something as simple as a polythene bag along with you. A couple of elastic bands can make the difference. Even if your camera is weatherproofed, quite often the lenses that you, that you buy aren't. So the best weatherproof camera on the planet with uh, unweatherproofed lenses can still let water in. But even if it is weatherproofed, why risk it? So if you bring along a couple of polythene bags, even if it's just something you can just stick over the top of the camera if it's a slight shower, and an elastic band just to wrap around it quickly so that the, the water can't get in and it can't blow off. Ideal idea to do on something like this. And the beauty is they can fit in your pocket or in your camera bag without taking any space whatsoever. Now the other thing to remember when you're shooting in dull conditions is you are tend to push the camera a little bit insofar as its abilities to pick the light up. There's less available light, so although it's daytime, you might have to push your ISO up a stop or two. Uh, don't be afraid to do that. We're, we seem to have a worry, a fear of uh, adjusting the ISO too high, and quite rightly so, because digital noise isn't great. But there is a, a great, again on a digital camera, there's a great deal of latitude that you can do. And I tend to shoot mostly below a thousand, a thousand ISO. I tend not to take it any further than that. And dislike really going anything above 800, to tell you the truth. But you can get away with it. And it's not going to cause you too many problems. Now the other thing I would suggest is try and get your exposure as close as you can in camera. And the beauty with a mirrorless system is you can actually see what you've shot straight away, which is fantastic. What that's going to do is it means that you don't have to do so much post-production. And although we do shoot in RAW and the information is there, if you can actually try and get um, the, the exposure right in the first place, then you've got less adjustments and less chance of inducing noise. Now the other thing you can do on these is most cameras now tend to have some sort of exposure bracketing on there. So if you to take three shots, one over, one on and one below exposure, first of all it gives you choice but also a lot of the software allows you to condense those three shots into one and take the best parts of each. We usually call it HDR, high dynamic range, which tends to have had a bit of a bad name but in actual fact what you're doing is just taking the best parts of several shots. And that can be really really good. In cloudy conditions it's probably less needed. As I said before, when we're shooting in bright light it's very easy to burn out the highlights and it's very very easy to lose the shadow information. But in the duller conditions the, the, the difference between light and dark tends to be pretty much um, restrained. Um, so you've got less dynamic range that you haven't to worry about to get the shot. So let's have a look at some of the photographs I've taken this afternoon. I haven't taken too many but let's have a look at the before and afters and see just what we can do.
the other thing about shooting in dull conditions is this. I'm just going to turn the camera on, give it a quick 360. See if you can spot it. There, did you see it? No, I didn't either. The crowds of people? No, there was none. Beauty about shooting on a cloudy day is you tend to get the place to yourself. Well, as soon as the sunshine comes out, especially in this area, as soon as the sunshine comes out, people come out with it. And as a photographer, trying to take a photograph of buildings or a landscape or something, the last thing you really want is crowds of people getting in the way of your shots. Now, you can try ex saying, excuse me, getting rid of them, you can with them and disappear. But on a day like today, you tend not to get them there in the first place. It's really, really good. So it gives a bit of a peace and tranquility to your shooting, which is enjoyable. The difference as well is noise. Now you might have heard in the background, but the most noise I've got here is some birds and the sheep bleating in the background, which is part of the reason I come out of the countryside. I thoroughly enjoy that sort of side of it. But to hear cars and car horns and children running around the place and screaming or people chatting in the background can make it difficult sometimes, especially if you're doing videos. So this is absolutely fantastic for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you something of an excuse to go out when it is cloudy and, and appreciate the fact that uh, you can still get some fantastic photography and videography done. My name is Brian James. If you've enjoyed the video, once again, all the usual sort of things, subscribe, bell, thumbs up, PayPal, whatever it is. Like You, you know the score, you're getting used to it now. by now. But whatever it is, just make sure you do one thing. Get your camera out, use it, and enjoy taking your photographs. See you soon. Bye-bye.